This is season number 19 of Bass Talk Live with Matt Pangrak. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Aftco, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Pro Guide Batteries, Beatdown Outdoors, Shoreline Boat and RV Repair, and Omnia Fishing. Hit him with the hook, Jeffries. PTL, coming at ya! Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live where we are going to talk bass fishing. We're going to talk California Delta West Coast bass fishing. You know, since we, Jeffrey's uh, always has had a, a soft spot for the West Coast. I think part of it was because when the Elite Series first went out there, he was one of the guys who was on Steve Kennedy when he was throwing the 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 Huddleston trout bait in Clear Lake, not knowing that there weren't trout in Clear Lake. And he got all the photos and all that stuff of the record breaking. And since then, uh, always covered the West Coast, always been a proponent of the West Coast. And then I got to know uh, Ken Ma about a decade ago and a bunch of other, you know, Littner and a bunch of guys out there ish. And uh, always BTL has always had a soft spot for the West Coast. Uh, and then I got to go out and we started covering the U S open out on the West coast, doing the live weigh in and tournament coverage, uh, with, uh, one bass and Billy Egan there. And it kind of had that whole mystique about it. All the guys out East are trying, it, it, it's, it's evolved. Well, then I got a call, uh, from Ken Ma earlier this year. And he's like, Hey, have you heard what's going on on the West coast? And I was like, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on out there now. And he goes, no, have you heard about this Western bass shootout? And I started diving into it. And we actually had a breaking news segment with uh, Jeremy DeHart and Ken Ma on, uh, earlier this year, where they're basically trying to create a basically Bassmaster Classic Championship style big money event for the West Coast guys combining all of the trails that are out there. And that's what we're going to talk about today. This thing takes place April 14th through 16th. It's the Western Bass Shootout. And we have all of the major players involved in it here. We're going to start by bringing them in one by one. And we're going to add a uh, one of the kind of driving forces and one of the major sponsors behind this. And that is none other than Bass Cat Boats, Yarcraft's own Rick Pierce. Rick, thanks for jumping on btl to uh to talk about this western bass shootout hey th- thanks a lot matt thanks for having us and thanks for doing this you got to be excited about this i mean you're giving away a, a a bass cat boat in this deal correct yeah we've got a, we've got a big boat up for the package on this and everything's going well i mean uh you know when we started this thing it was kind of a funny deal but it's everybody yo man you'll never get 50 guys to sign up fish for their own money and uh Man, we got 50 guys to sign up, fish for their own money, and we're off the ground running. And no doubt, we got some glitches along the road, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna get her started and see if we can keep it cranking. All right, let's bring in our next uh, guest. This is gonna be a little two parter. We've got the we've got the uh, tournament directors and kind of the organizer guys that are that are on, and then we'll get to the angler side of this thing too. But uh, Jeremy DeHart, uh, president of the Wild Bass Wild West bass trail there uh thank you for jumping on welcome back to btl you were on kind of during the announcement of this thing uh earlier this year with ken ma glad to have you back jeremy you have to be excited that we're uh, a week out now yeah it's uh it's come really fast and so we're we're pumped and uh when ready for that it's it's going to be exciting a lot of parts and pieces moving to make all this happen so it's it's been a it's been a fun time all right, and then we're going to bring in the uh, a, a final piece of the puzzle, and that is the man who makes things happen, as dubbed by Mark Jeffries. I'm not sure if he's <laughs> if he's thrilled with that title, but that is who you are. That is, uh, that is director of operations for One Bass, Billy Egan. Good to see you at the Classic, Billy. I saw you around quite a bit, uh, and welcome back to BTL. You've been on BTL several times in the past. I have. Thank you very much, Matt, for having me. It was uh, very good to see you out at the Classic. The Classic was something pretty special this year. Uh, just, you know, that location lent to a great event, and it was attended really, really well. 
And I know <laughs> by being there and running events here in California, if it was in California, the fire chief would have shut that thing down with how many people were in that <laughs> building. But uh, they did a little different back there. So it was a great event. And to see all those anglers and sponsors and be a part and, you know, just show uh, some support for the West Coast out there was awesome. All right. There is another uh, there is another portion to this and that would be the western uh series for the mlf uh toyota division that's alan gray reached out to him unable to jump on uh the show today but this western bass shootout takes the top anglers from the apex pro tour the one bass tour the toyota series and the wild west bass team trail puts them all together what is it a two thousand dollar entry fee and they're fishing for Hundreds of thousands of dollars of prizes, including a hundred thousand dollar first place prize, and uh, the biggest thing that has hit the West Coast. I mean, I would guess since what an Elite Series event was out there, as far as a payout is concerned, probably would be in recent terms. You know, no back doubt in the it- day, it was probably the Western Classic, but that hasn't been run for a long time uh, mm-hmm. over the years. So, that or one of the major events, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Rick, let me ask you this. How did all this come together to try to bring together all of the different major players on the West Coast to bring everyone together to have this Western Bass shootout thing? Because, I mean, listen, I was in a bass club when I was I'm still in a bass club and I know how hard it is to get 20 old guys to agree on whether or not a marina's off limits on Lake Shelbyville in central Illinois. So I would imagine a lot of different moving parts go into making this happen. Yeah. Well, um, that's Shelbyville. That brings back some memories. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I guarantee they're not good memories. If you've been out there, Rick, uh, you don't catch me at Shelbyville <laughs> no. all the time. Sometimes you do, but yeah. Uh, no, um, when we did this, Billy's aware back going back to our first conversation back in his first trip here, we had a conversation about something like this. And we were kind of trying to bring it together. And I brought Jeremy in about five years ago, four years ago, five years ago, really, I guess. And so we're trying to bring this together over the last, um, really, since we've been involved in the West Coast. It's been kind of one of those things that is we, we wanted to evolve into a West Coast championship. What you got, Matt, those guys qualify. And you look at Toyota Series, for example. They qualified in the Toyota Series. And I wish Alan had been able to join us today. Um, but, uh, certainly we'd love to have him on the show with us, but, uh, at the, um, West coast, they qualify on the West coast going to Arizona or Havasu or the Delta. And then they've got to jump in their truck and drive 2,300 miles to Tennessee to wherever just to fish championship. And it's, it's one of those things really bears down on it. And so our goal was bringing something like that to the West and also to qualify, among the upper tier what we've done is we basically set an entry fee line and people go inside that entry fee line and we're going to wind up and opening this up even more and figuring out ways to develop it and jeremy and i've discussed that but we certainly want to keep bringing it forward as we get tournament events out west that bring an entry fee that's high enough that they sort of fall in that semi-pro circle that we can bring them into this event and then give us a true west coast championship and then those gentlemen out west have something that they can fish for without driving all the way across the country because they really don't get all of them to drive across the country it, it is it is uh difficult so you guys set settled on uh taking the top anglers in 2022 from these tours and then inviting them to be a part of what a 50 angler roster for the western bass shootout yeah, that's right. And uh, we, we've developed uh, back again, this is about a five year ago plan. The whole plan is about growing fishing on the West Coast. And we're excited to see that happen. And we know fishing is growing on the West Coast. It's really been some good development in the last recent years. I mean, we look at boat sales, bait sales, memberships of and fishing licenses. We're seeing this thing grow out West on fresh water. So we want to keep growing fresh water fishing and Certainly, we're seeing it whether you're in Montana, Wyoming, or all the way down to California Delta and through to the SoCal area, we're seeing fishing grow. So we want to continue to do that. Um, Colorado's got an amazing amount of growth. We're really working on that as a grassroots level more. 
but I know you've got a Colorado angler coming on a little bit. And Colorado's had great growth in bass fishing and fishing overall. So we're hoping this can continue to grow fishing on the West. There's the population base is out there. The angler base is not. So we're really working to grow that angler base. Uh, I want to get to Billy and Jeremy here because each of you guys with your respective uh, leagues have done incredible things. Billy, uh, the U.S. Open, kind of the longstanding West Coast gold standard uh, by which all tournaments, would it would I say, east, west of the Mississippi are are judged by phenomenal growth with the U.S. Open over the past, uh, what, eight eight years or so i mean dude you've had like max fields like every time i do it it's like hey we're already maxed out you've had record fields for it uh one bass has done a really good job as far as rejuvenating growing and and building that u.s open especially with the challenges you face over the last couple of years with the water levels out there on lake mead yeah it's been you know this is my 14th year uh running one bass uh the 2010 u.s open was my first u.s open i think we had 112 boats uh, at that event back then. And, uh, you know, Aaron Martins, that's when I became good buddies with Aaron. And he he approached me at that U.S. Open because uh, he won the 2011 one. And he said, you know, we really need to get this event to 200 boats. And, you know, back then, 112 boats was a big deal back then. Uh, there weren't a lot of guys in boats and there weren't a lot of guys fishing tournaments. But the guys that were were uh, have been around for a while. Um, they had, you know, gotten their, uh, feet wet and, uh, spent a lot of time on Western waters. But, uh, like Rick said, the West is growing, um, the participation in the events and our, our events, wild West events and, uh, other events have uh, done real well. We've, uh, been fortunate over the last few years to have sellout events, uh, due to people just wanting to get outside and, you know, the, current landscape that's been happening over the last couple of years, but uh, things are doing real well still. Uh, I think for, for both Juan Bass and, and Wild West, we're getting good turnouts at our events, but that's because we're, uh, we have great products. We take care of our customers and we've got a great sponsor behind us like Bass Cat Boats and Mercury Motors and all the other sponsors out there mm -hmm. that really help us reach those uh, anglers out there. And with our, and Wild West's um, amateur side, that's really where the growth uh, is and where it needs to be focused on because those are our future pros and then the, the kids below them. So, you know, it's it's been a long road, but uh, as far as Juan Bass is concerned, this is our 41st year running bass fishing tournaments. We've been around for a while, had a few different tournament directors over the years, and uh, I'm fortunate just to be able to pick up what they laid down before me and kind of uh, resoil the uh, landscape a little bit and uh, revive it a little bit, and I think we're all doing a great job of that. Billy, uh, to to qualify to be in the top to qualify for the Western Bass uh, Shootout, what you're talking the Angler of the Year standings, which is like what a California Open, uh, Arizona Open, does the U.S. Open slide into that too? I think you have what four kind of qualifying tournaments. Uh, yeah, last year we had, we brought in the Mojave open and that was our okay. first year of bringing that in, which wasn't part of the point. So last year was based on three events. Uh, it was okay. the Arizona open at Havasu in February, which we had like 170 something boats at. It was the California open, which I think we had 200 boats at, uh, last year and, or maybe just under 200 boats last year. And then the U S open was also part of the points this year. Um, we're using all four of our events to qualify guys for the 2024 uh, event. And okay. uh, it will be our rescheduled Arizona Open, which we had to put in November because of the Wind. uh, winds that we came across in, in February and for safety reasons didn't uh, run that tournament. But uh, we're starting our season in two weeks at the Laughlin Open. And then it'll be the Cal Open, which I think since we are basically the only show at clear lake this year the big show is going to be i've been told we should beat our 214 boat record but we shall see you know wow. fishing's going to be good in june yeah uh go ahead and then we'll move on to the u.s open normally we would end our angler of the year 
uh, season at the U.S. Open and crown the AOI Pro and Co. and uh, give them the ten thousand dollar prize. But we'll be doing that in November with at the uh, rescheduled event for our Havasu event. So this year will be a little bit different. It is four events, all four count. Good stuff. All right. And then, Jeremy, what you guys have done with Wild West and the Apex Series, I think the Apex Series, which is, is this his second year for the Apex Series? Uh, this is actually the third year. Okay, third so, year for the Apex mm-hmm. Series. But that is, in my opinion, the most unique format that has ever, like, I, I, I sometimes rip on MLF. It's so hard to figure out how to do it. But then you look at what the Apex Series does, where you can take the number of legal fish or you can take your top five and then you can combine them. And then you have a one day shootout, dude, it gets, gets, get the best of both worlds with everything. You talk about some of the names that are involved with that. I think a really innovative concept that is, that is, uh, that has hit the West coast and, and obviously has some traction, especially with some of the names you've been able to garner for that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it's been, sorry, we got a little bit of sun coming through. I'll try to address it. Uh, Um, go ahead and log out real quick and log back in. I got a little bit of static. Okay. Just jump out and jump back in. Uh, but but what I was just trying to do is get a feel for the different organizations that all make up this uh, Western Bass shootout and and the foothold that they have on the West. And Rick, it has to make you feel good as uh, as as Bass Cat to see such success that has been established on the West, particularly between these two uh, these two organizations, both independently well, and kind of together. Well, these two, of course, Billy's running one right now that's been the yeah, marquee forever. event out west. I mean, there's no doubt what U.S. Open is the marquee event out west. It's the the it's, open. It is the open, right? So we don't want to ever take anything out of that. But I mean, it makes us feel good to see what we're doing. And you know yourself that we've been working on this growth factor out there for a long time, Matt. And so it makes us feel good that we're seeing growth. And in my lifetime, you know, I'm in my sixties, and this is the first time I've ever seen growth on the west coast. It was always pretty much the same percentage of the market share, and that's changing now for all of the things, whether it's baits, whether it's tackle, whether it's anglers, we're seeing that growth. So that was our goal going in. So to see that, that's good. And, you know, it's it's probably not going to come to fruition and be the the market and in, in the benefit of my career as much because I'm, I'm certainly older than all you men are. But uh, in the, my kids' careers, their kids' careers, and Billy's kids' careers, we're going to see this thing be a bigger part of the West Coast. And that's our goal. Um, the getting the organizations together, the primary four organizations we put this together, was trying to get all the players to play together, which we've been able to do that. And we've got more people involved. You know, we brought Randy Pringle in to work as a tournament director and run okay. PBT out there. So that's a big one, too, with Randy coming in to help us out. Yeah. Um, you know, um, one bass, uh, certainly we need their support in this, but we really need all the support out West. And, you know, you and I have talked about this, Jeremy and I, Billy and I, we've all talked about it, but we, we want everything out West to support this, whether it's, um, you know, even the people down South, the Angler's Choice, and I've called Rick out several times, but we need their support. We need Kent Brown's support. We've got to have everyone supporting this event to grow it, to be what it needs to be out West. And certainly we're running into some, to some situations there where there's a lot of, well, why do you need that? We need that because without them, we don't grow the West. We all run our own platforms. And for the history of life out West, everyone's had their own platform and it's never really succeeded. And so we need to succeed. This is one platform. That's been our goal from day one. It's not about bass cap boats. It's 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 not about Wild West. It's not about one bass. Uh, it's really about growing it all. And Jeremy and I have spent a lot of time. You know, we took we went down seventeen and all the the on the um, the three events that we chose to go down on ten, and that would be on the pro ams. Jeremy went down seventeen on the pro ams. Went down seventeen on uh, one bass. He went down seventeen on Toyota to fill the event and then took the remainder, I think three out of apex to fill that up. And so we kind of just backed up on that. And, um, it's, it's really good that we've got that. I'm really happy with what we've done with that because that's really good. But now we need to go ahead and bring that forward and bring more people into it. We're hoping the fans come out and support it. 
Um, we hope that it's going to be like, a, uh, I think you've got right at 80 vendors in this event. So when we go to Sacramento for the outdoor show, it's going to have like 80 vendors. And so we're really after growing that portion of it so we can make it a show, a destination in the Sacramento area for this year. And then next year, grow on and beyond that. We've had some uh, challenges, just to be honest, with Sacramento because they've got an NCAA event they spent a lot of time on. And they've got some things they've been sidetracked with because they have a much larger event coming into Sacramento. So we kind of were the back door of this thing, so to speak, that we're kind of filler for them. But uh, certainly we've got them behind us now. We're getting it in. And I hope we can have a good event in Sacramento and get everyone in the area out there. Good stuff. Uh, Jeremy, I think we got you back audio wise yeah. now. Yep, you're good. Uh just a really unique deal in the third year now with the uh, Apex series that you have going on uh, out West that adds another kind of dimension to the opportunities that some West Coast anglers have. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a, a really interesting and unique experience to watch Apex grow. Um, it's it's really become kind of uh, on the street. You'll hear comments of uh that's what that's what their objective and goal is is to make it to apex but now it's transitioning into what we're as rick and and billy have alluded to trying to build the west coast and i want to make it into the western bass shootout so um you know this is the first year there's going to be uh you know a unique opportunity there with the apex group coming in it provides um quite a competitive competitive level from all series so it's it's going to be fun we look forward to it and uh yeah i i really hope that uh the 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 winner it doesn't matter to me who where who or what and where it comes mm -hmm. from as far as the series go because this is all about being successful on the west coast now billy i mean billy jeremy rick there are guys who fish who fish wild west one bass apex all three a a mlf that fish everything there's certain guys who only fish sub there's some guys who only fish the others i mean this you're not like pigeonholed into a specific league or organization with any of this too you got a, a wide variety of anglers across the board right yeah there there's crossover for sure there's some guys that will fish everything that's out here and they won't miss a tournament there's some guys that are uh really want to go back east and fish the championship with mlf and that's all they focus on because they think that's their shot to uh you know the big leagues and to make it um and then there's guys that uh are loyal to the organization because either their father or grandfather or somebody uh uh you know supported that circuit and it's it's what they know and it's what they're comfortable with and i think uh we all just try to offer a platform that's uh, fair, that uh, gives everybody the same equal opportunity to uh, reach the top and to work with our sponsors to make sure the anglers get uh, some awesome things in association with these events. But more importantly, that the public sees what we're all doing and that the sponsors see that through our efforts, their brands and their products are getting put into new people's hands and that uh, people are diving in, if you will, uh, into bass fishing or fishing in general. That's well said there, Billy. Uh, I see certain elements and I used to do the, all the, all the, uh, media stuff on location for the old TTBC that had the top 15 for the PAA, <laughs> the professional anglers association, the top 15 for the FLW, the top 15 for the elite series. Now there was a Toyota truck and a hundred grand for big bass and a lot of money, but it was more of a friendly bragging rights. I mean, they were cracking brews behind the stage before they weighed in and stuff. So I, I see this as maybe a little bit more intense, the Western bass shootout, especially with them having their own uh, $2,000 in the pot at this point. Uh, and especially with the payout there, but there were certain elements about that. You had, you know, the best, which the best anglers obviously want to compete against the best anglers across the board and the money and the bragging, right? So a few kind of similar, similar elements of bringing that together. But that was my favorite event of the entire year. And the anglers really enjoyed that event, too. So uh, I'm assuming this is just the first year. Let's get into the event details. Let's get into the event details. Whoever wants to talk about that, it is the 14th through the 16th. So if you are on the West Coast, if you want to follow this from Oklahoma, however, what's the best way to get involved with the Western Bass Shootout coming up here in about a week? 
So we'll be able to have that available on all uh, social media platforms. You'll be able to follow along with the, the Tourney X uh, platform that we use on Apex. That way you can see where anglers are catching fish. There's a, you know, there's a unique process with that. It works really well. It's very entertaining, kind of engaging where you just sit there. If you're working, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, a video going, but you just sit there and watch the numbers go back and forth. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. Um, and then we'll have updates throughout the day that are live. Uh, they'll be able to be linked up with Juan Bass and, and uh, MLF if they choose to do so um, on their platforms. And it's all about generating content, making sure the guys are, are getting recognized. And there is a, uh, a field of, of really good anglers that you're scrolling through right there. So um, we did have some unique uh, logistics that, that changed recently due to the four lakes in California that, that feed into the, the delta there. Um, the Discovery Park ramp location um, has basically been shut down and flooded for quite some time. And it takes the uh, park service in Sacramento to um, a, a few weeks once they open that to clean it up so we can use it. So we've relocated the actual launch site, which will be at the B&W facility. Um, it's about 46 minutes away from the convention center in downtown Sacramento. And we have security um, cars that will lead the pack and help escort those anglers through that in various times throughout the way. And so um, the way it'll work out is the anglers will, will weigh in their fish at the actual um, just uh, B and W location, and then they will come and announce the weight with their two largest fish at the convention center. So they'll drive through the, just as if you would see at a, a Bassmaster um, Classic event or a Bassmaster Elite Series event. Um, there'll be a, a whole stage presentation and lights and cameras and video and all sorts of things going on. This will this event will also be um, filmed. And it'll be aired on the Pursuit Channel and uh, Valleys and Fox Sports various locations um, throughout the year. So should be some great media opportunities for the guys to really use and launch their platform. And it's five bucks general admission to get in. Five bucks. And a lot of the local tackle shops throughout uh, Northern California, Southern California, they've received um, little uh, six by nine cards that have a QR code on the back that will provide a discount for two dollars and fifty cents so it's all about getting guys and and families to participate come on out we've got a a can-am uh quad that's going to be raffled away for um one of however many attendees that we have and so we look forward to to giving that away and hopefully that'll entice some additional um foot traffic into the show to see all the all the vendors there's a lot of non-endemic. There's a lot of endemic vendors um, at this event. So, and we've got uh, three recording artists, some from California and others that are touring back and forth um, from the Midwest back to West Coast. And so that'll be uh, that'll be a fun experience in the evenings. Well, there you go. Am I leaving out anything anything key here, Billy, Rick, Jeremy? Because I mean, I got I got yeah. Nick. Salvucci, Alice Klein, and Bill Brown ready to talk about the fishing. And yeah. I need to have Nick. I need well, I need to have all three of these guys as featured guests for like entire shows of BTL because I've been intrigued with Alex Klein and how he does his stuff with the he, he just handles his business. Recent winner, Salvucci. I've spent a day in the boat with Nick Salvucci before. I don't know if you remember that or not, but it, it was he's and a US Open champion. yes yes that's how i owe that trophy right there to nick salvucci uh and then uh obviously uh bill brown uh out of colorado unique story there so what am i leaving out here guys before we take a break and move on to the anglers yeah we've we've covered the event we've covered the um outdoor show and people coming to the expo and hopefully they do show up and that's what we need i mean and we know we're not going to come out with the Bassmaster Classic event size, but hopefully we can come out like we've always said a little bit more of the Crappie Expo size events. And so that's our goal, uh, getting it like the original FLW Cups were, where a few thousand people. Uh, there's a real good dynamic this change. It's kind of changed it quite a bit, as Jeremy pointed out, and that's a change from Discovery Park because it's going to put those guys that would have had to run 
pretty good ways to get into Frank's tracks. It's going to dump them in just north of Frank's track now. So it's going to change the look of the delta and the angling is going to change a little bit. And you can talk about that with Alex and those guys. But uh, certainly that's going to change it from an angling perspective because they had a pretty good run to get down there before. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, They can thank the floods on that. So <laughs> I think there's and a, maybe a suggestion I, that I have that might help not only – you know, I, we hope that this year's event goes off well. Obviously, um, the information as it came out, uh, you know, Jeremy is working real hard to secure all that stuff for the convention center and things. We, we've been, we've started our, uh, well, we will be starting our first event here in a couple of weeks. And we've kind of talked about 2024 and people qualifying for that. I think one thing that might help, is there any, information that jeremy you can share on the 2024 so that people can put it on their calendar and you know kind of know when to expect it might be next year that would probably help some of these guys understand now i know what i'm shooting for and i i, I can keep that time zone open for next year yeah i think billy as we discussed back at the uh the original conversation with rick we're trying to set this time frame in this april uh date aside um, it all depends a lot on also availability from from the endemic sponsors or booth um, organizers that can attend from the red crest and the bassmaster classic so um, originally we discussed that and we were waiting on their schedules um, so once they announced yeah. that we were able to to put that out there um, but as far as this goes, once this show is over, May 1st, we go all back into planning phases. The city of Sacramento wants us back in some fashion at some point in time. So we have to, you know, put all of our heads together. You, me, Rick, uh, uh, everybody to see, hey, how, what best venue, location, so on and so forth. And then we just come with a joint effort of, of advertising this show and, uh, and maximizing it. But, uh, a lot of learning curves that have taken place throughout this year. Um, a lot of ins and outs, and and sometimes we um, figure things out last minute, or we figure them out ahead of time, and and we make adjustments. So this uh, this whole opportunity should uh, have have everybody figuring out some of the loopholes, and I'm sure there will be some at any time you have a first event. Um, that's that's bound to happen. So once we identify those and. Um, some may be significant. Some may just be behind the scenes. We understand, hey, let's do this, make it a little bit better, or we could add this feature here or there. And I'm sure a lot of recommendations will come across from, from everyone. So we look forward to implement those. And, uh, you know, California is the, one of the most difficult uh, states to do business in as far as fishing and the permits and off limits and re regulations and so on. I don't need to tell you any of that stuff. So, uh, <laughs> When you get when you get through all of that, it's why do you like, think uh, I do tournaments during the week, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, it's just holding them in general. But this, you, you know, California Department of Fish and Wildlife have been tremendous supporters um, through this. They're working, you know, diligently to allow us to make sure we can transport the fish, um, fish care. They'll have uh, agents on site. So there's a whole lot of things in there. But we'll. May 1st, we're rocking and rolling, ready to go into the next year of planning and start making this a full, full on advertisement. Um, so everybody gets ready to go. So uh, I like it. Uh, we're all going to be... figure out where we all fit. And that's what's going to happen as we get through this year. And I think we've got a lot of development among all the organizations and the event. And certainly Jeremy's put a lot to grow. And we're just going to figure it out as we go into next year. And I'm sure we've got the dates now on the classic. We've got the dates now on Red Crest. So we can certainly move forward, as Billy said, to go into next year and get some things mm -hmm. dialed in as soon as we're through. And then as a fan, I will also be watching it for the first time, too, because I'll be okay. uh, I'll be interested in this. Like I said, I keep up with the Apex. I keep up. I really keep up with everything that goes on over at One Bass with the uh, I was bummed to see the Arizona open, but safety first, especially. Uh, <laughs> not an issue there like i think that 18 was the first day that you'd ever canceled for wind in the u.s open uh well, too yeah. but <laughs> it's I, I mean, not a trend i want to get used to no it's, no it's but i mean sometimes you, i and, mean uh you know 
it's not easy canceling a tournament. There's a lot of work that goes I into mean, it, for... a lot of financial effort, and uh, to not be able to run a tournament that you've spent a Ooh. year planning for it uh, it hurts a little bit. But we've got uh, a great plan to uh, put it back together, and we're looking forward to the events we have coming up. So sounds good. And Rick, don't you have to get out there with the don't, don't you have a Jaguar with a 450 on it that needs running? <laughs> yeah we got one we got to break in man <laughs> <laughs> okay uh yeah. <laughs> gentlemen i greatly appreciate it uh hopefully this has given the the viewers and listeners a better understanding of what's going on out there the the, the fishery is off limits now i think there was an eight day off limits i believe uh on the california uh delta for this western bass shootout that combines uh the best of uh one bass wild west the apex and the uh mlf toyota series in the western division we'll let you guys get back to uh the business at hand gonna take a break and when we come back three of the anglers that will be competing in the first ever western bass shootout on the california delta nick salvucci alex klein and bill brown one more thing billy yeah real quick i, I want to wish everybody the greatest luck at the Western Bass Shootout. I wish Jeremy and Rick and everybody and crew up there a great event. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend. Uh, I've got another event going on that same weekend down here in Southern California. But Brad uh, uh, Van Zyl, our general manager, mm -hmm. will be up there representing Juan Bass. And uh, to all the anglers, all the fans, be safe. Have a great time. And thanks for having us on. Thanks, Billy. Thank you so much. All right. Jeremy, thank you. Thank you. Rick. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Rick. See ya. All right. It is BTL later, at a special Bye. time on a Wednesday, and we'll be back right after that. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry leading design coupled with tournament winning performance. The Puma STS from BassCat. Feel the rush. Shoreline Boat and RV, dock rash, storm damage, collision repair, that deep scratch or gouge from trying to access that secret creek. Shoreline Boat and RV can get your prize possession back in mint condition and looking good on the water, fast. All repairs are done in-house, so they're able to get your boat or RV back to brand new, quickly. All Shoreline's work comes with a rock-solid warranty. Find out more at ShorelineBoatandRV.com, Kansas City, Austin, and Tulsa. kind of man. And on behalf of all of those bigger, I gotta say it once and for all, it's bad enough that the fish look smaller in our hands. The last thing we should have to worry about is getting quality outdoor clothing that fits. Avco, any fish, any water. All right, welcome back, BTL. On a Wednesday, talking about the Western Bass Shootout, and we had a yeah, a lot of the behind the scenes guys i gotta be honest i like talking to the anglers i like talking to what's going to be going on on the delta and it sounds like there's going to be a lot more fishing time involved so all right let's bring them let's bring them in one by one i guess you could also say the man the myth the legend when it comes to nick salvucci nick you got me you there can you hear me i got you loud and clear yep yeah I'm I, glad I got you can you hear me yeah, I don't. I really. I think maybe I've talked to you one time since that fateful day at 2018 when we were paired together for the for the U.S. Open. Thanks for jumping on BTL. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think I shot you a text. I ran into some of your buddies down there in El Salto. I think we uh, we talked. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Uh, since then, you've only gone on to win the uh, U.S. Open, a couple other events, and recently a uh, Toyota Series. Correct. Yeah, just uh, just won the last uh, Toyota Series on the Delta a couple weeks ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, you outlasted your buddy Ken Ma. I sent Ken Ma a message. I was like, I've never seen someone so happy that someone else won a tournament because Ken is just a genuine, you know, genuinely nice guy. But he was legit jacked for you, man. That you guys went one two. Yeah, Ken. Ken told me you sent him a text. My feelings were hurt. I didn't get a text from him. Well, I didn't know. I mean, I figured you were you were partying pretty hard after that W. Oh, we did have some fun. Do you still have a, a Jack Daniels caddy? Uh, a crown Royal, crown Royal crowd, a crowd Royal caddy. I remember Brad Hallman and I talk about that to this day that you'd hired someone is his job was to keep it cold and close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotta have that. Gotta, gotta, gotta <laughs> All have right. it. Let, let's bring in <laughs> Alex Klein. Uh, Alex <laughs> Klein, you're, uh, actually, uh, like I said, if you have to jump off of this call to take care of business at hand, feel free to, but thank you for jumping yep. on you too. Also just recently lifted some hardware. Did you not? Yeah, I did. At, uh, most recently at Shasta, like Shasta back at the end of January. Okay, and I, like I said, I've also wanted to get you on to talk about like the super clean. Because you yeah. guys have like, so the East Coast, you guys have like this these weird sponsors out West that are like kind of <laughs> mythical. It was like when that first wave of guys came, they were like, oh my gosh, you know, Skeet and Aaron and, and Brett yeah. and all those guys. So I want to get you back on. And then uh, Colorado uh, angler, uh, Bill Brown, thank you for jumping on. Uh, BTL as well. Rick actually talked about uh, expanding that reach of the West Coast and mentioned you as one of the anglers that that's benefited with so many more opportunities going out West. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, privileged, privileged to have this opportunity and uh, can't thank them guys enough. Billy Egan, with Juan Bass and Jeremy with Wild West and definitely Rick Pierce for all they're doing to make this happen. It is. Uh, so the West Coast is a, is an odd deal. It seems to me now, uh, Nick, you've been around this thing for a while. It seems uh, there are some some things, especially like One Bass and, and FLW slash MLF uh, that, are, that are kind of staples out there, regardless of, of boat numbers and the ebbs and flows. But it seems like a really good time right now in 2023 to be a tournament bass angler on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree to that. Agree to that. Um, I mean, I fish kind of all the circuits. Uh, I don't do the full season and all of them just because of time, but I, mean, I fish Apex full time. I fish all the MLFs because I like going back to the Toyota Series Championship. Um, and then I jump in on the One Basses and the Wild Wests uh, when, when my schedule permits. It seems like that that uh, what there's five or six different trails that are going on out there now that offer uh, either individual or team series. Yeah, there's a lot of teams. I, I quit doing teams. My team partner moved to Georgia, so I've not done. Oh, Lindner? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done one team event. I just did it like right before the Toyota series. Yeah, and that's so he could it. go to more Georgia Bulldog games is what I heard. <laughs> yeah, I called him on my way down and told him I was sad because, I mean, like I said, I don't even do team events anymore because he left me. Yeah. Uh, Alex, you uh, you fish a while. You're primarily a Wild West guy. Yeah, so I pretty much fished the Wild West and the Apex, and that's just due to um, scheduling and time um, with my job. I, I get eight weeks off, so I choose to fish those. Um, I started fishing Wild West right when I got out of college, and that was just due to the price point um, for the entry fee. So that's the good thing about the West Coast right now is we have all these different leagues going on, and they all offer – a lot of different things and they the anglers can pick what ones they want to fish based on their schedule their time schedule and uh, the price point that they want to fish okay and then bill uh you fish which ones do you fish you fish uh, primarily primarily i've been fishing the one best i okay. uh i also fish some uh the major league toyota series when uh when i can this year i'm gonna fish uh both circuits all of them so that's i got a full plate this year uh, from your standpoint, then talk about what it means to have a, a tournament like the Western Bass shootout that brings it all together, uh, with the, the prize and then the notoriety, especially with what we just talked about, uh, with Billy, Jeremy and Rick about the publicity that that's going to bring along with it, along with the prize money. Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, I, I don't know how you get a bigger platform than having a televised event that'll be recorded the just the the fishery that we're going to be on and the the group of anglers you know i'm heck I'm, I'm i'm humbled big time by being able to compete with these guys and have the opportunity to fish against your your nick salvucci's or alex klein's and ken ma's i mean it, there's just it's a list of hammers 
And being from Colorado, you know, I have to travel. So I'm sure I'm going to take my lumps, but you got to get in there and get your feet wet before you can uh, throw your hat in the ring, you know? Yeah, I'll go to Alex then, because like I said, at any moment you could have to bounce. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I mentioned the sponsor, and then we'll get the the opposite side of that of fishing just for the money. But for uh, a guy who has a sponsor portfolio like yourself, how big is it to be able to tell them that you'll be showcased on this, especially with the weigh-ins, with everything that's going on at the expo? I mean, yeah, it's, it's huge. To have the opportunity to showcase your sponsors is how you continue to build sponsors and keep those business relationships. Um, fishing's one side of it. And then you have the whole sponsor sponsorship is the whole other side. So it just to have the opportunity and the platform on the West coast, because before we didn't really have that, um, the West coast is kind of the forgotten stepchild of fishing. So as we continue to build this and create that platform, you're going to have more opportunities for anglers to, um, get business sponsors and, uh, help build their career. So hopefully we can continue to build this and all the circuits can come together and we can make this into a bigger and better show each year. And Nick, you're the, uh, you're the Steve Kennedy of the West coast. Uh, you fish events for cash money and, and, re and rely on that. Uh, so obviously you have to be thrilled to, to be able to throw a little bit of your cash in the ring with, with another opportunity for a six figure payout. No, for, for sure. I mean, there's uh, the four major circuits out here. I mean, I'm a very competitive person and uh, very big on goals and, I mean, so these these four uh, four circuits, I've, I've won one yeah, out of each circuit. So now I got a new goal. I mean, now we have a new tournament out here, and, and it's the Western Bow Shootout. So definitely that's that's a goal of mine to, to take on that trophy. Okay, whoever wants to take this question on, but I'm curious, like, it, okay, what's – What's the rivalry like between like all the leagues and stuff? I mean, are there, is there a rivalry between it all? Like, listen, yeah, you're all smiling. So that there's a yes in that there are some, <laughs> there are some rivalries, but does everybody get a log out there? Or is it, is there going to be a little bit of a back and forth kind of like what we saw a little bit in the TTBC back in the day? I'm leaving I'll, that open for whoever starts talking first. So I'll let Alex or Bill take that one. I, I don't think there's a rivalry. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a rivalry. Uh, you have your same core fishermen that fish um, all these circuits together. Um, and like I said earlier, we kind of pick and choose which ones based on our personal schedules and the tournaments that they, um, the tournament dates when they come out and based on price point. Um, so no, we, we, we've all fished against each other before in some tournaments one way or another. So it's, there's not a huge rivalry, but it'll be fun to all get together and just fish against the best dudes and see everybody again. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, there's there's no rivalry. We we see each other at various events, U.S. Opens, Toyotas, back and forth with the Juan Bass. So, you know, it's uh, I'm looking forward to meeting a bunch of the the Wild West guys and some of the Apex guys because you know I'm kind of the newbie on the scene. So I'm looking forward to being there and being part of it. All right, we'll stay with you right there, uh, Bill. Fishing wise, California Delta, middle of April. I expect this thing is going to be a slug fest. I mean, I'm from Oklahoma. I just hear that time of the year. And I think megalodons, is it going to be, is it going to be a heavyweight deal or uh, are we a little dip in the Delta right now? Boy, I, I hope it's gotten a lot better since the last Toyota there because uh, the, the water being as cold as it was and as muddy as it was, it was, it was tough to get bites, but it is the Delta and it does have them. They, they live there. So uh, the warming water should, should help a lot to where you're at least getting more bites. So that's at least what I'm hoping on. How much to win this thing? I think it's a three-day event. I'm going to say it's going to take at least 20 a day. Maybe 60, 22. 60 pounds. Yeah, 60 to 65 pounds is what my guess is. But you never know. It could it could go 70 pounds or better. So, Alex, your thoughts? It's definitely going to be fishing better than what it was during that MLF event just because of <laughs> – the warming water, um, it can't get any worse, so to speak. Uh, it's going to be difficult, though, because our we haven't had much change. We still had cold storms coming in and more water runoff. This weekend's supposed to warm up, so hopefully with the warming water and the moon phase, um, these fish will start moving up. And, yeah, it could be anywhere from 65 to 70 pounds. It went for three days. Your thoughts, Nick? I think it's going to happen. I think uh, the big ones are going to be biting, and we're about a month behind. I mean, this March that we had back here in California, it's the coldest we've had in 88 years. Those fish are a month behind. But I, I think uh, it's going to be kind of 
hit and miss. You're going to see some guys coming in with potential 30 pound bags and you see some guys struggling to catch a limit, but I think over 70 pounds is going to win. And then if you want to meet any of these three anglers, along with the list of other, uh, the other uh, West coast anglers who are there available, you can just go to Western bass shootout.com. Uh, you guys will be at the uh, weighing in at the expo because I read that right. You guys are taking your two biggest and weighing them in at the expo, right? Yeah. And then there's concerts and stuff afterwards. So it's going to be a unique event. Anytime you have the first time for something, like I said, uh, the first one is always special. You always remember that. So and a mix between all the different circuits. So, gentlemen, any, anyone else have anything that you want to add before uh, before we let you get back to your to business at hand? I'm good. Just thanks. Thanks for having us on, Matt. All right, all three of you, Bill, Alex, and Nick. In the in the next couple of months, I want to get you guys on as individual guests on BTL. If you're down for that, you all three have unique stories. You need to catch up with Nick. And I want Alex's story and and also Bill uh, there in Colorado. I know that's a tough road to hoe in the bass fishing game, and you're more more so the a trout state where you're trying to make a oh, name yes. for bass fishing. Lots lots of driving when you live in Colorado. Yeah, my home lake's three hours away. That's Lake Powell, so it's in oh, Utah. Okay, <laughs> I day trip three hour drives to Lake Powell for oh, fun. Wow, yeah. Wow. All right, guys. Good luck next week in the Western Bass Shootout. Thanks for jumping on BTL. Thanks, Thanks. Matt. Thanks, Matt. All right, see ya. All right, that was uh, Bill Brown, Alice Klein, and Nick Salvucci. Uh, all three of those guys, very accomplished West Coast anglers. We're going to take our final break of the show when we come back, uh, give some final details, and we have a unique, uh, we got a unique setup for the re- remainder of the week of BTLs that I will go into. It is a BTL special West Coast edition on a Wednesday. We will be back right after this. The great thing about the new Sensation Soft Plastics from Big Bite Baits, heavily scented, Super soft, buoyant, comes in seven great new shapes. I've got a couple of them of my signature series, the Cliffhanger Worm and the Ramtail Craw. Great for a flipping jig, football jig, swim jig, all that. Several other great shapes. Really excited about it. We've worked over the last year. Catches fish all over the country, and I think it's going to catch fish for people everywhere you try it. Are you looking to install your own fishing electronics? The solution is the Bass Tank Power Harness. It takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the deep dive app today. Look at that beast right there. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, You've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. Having confidence in your tackle while on the water is one of the main things to success in my opinion. In the last couple years with Denali, I've had just that. From anything from spinning rods, casting rods, tungsten products, even now to casting and spinning reels, I have the confidence to go out there and get the job done and know that all my equipment is going to handle it and do it just the way I want it. The thing about Denali is you've got great quality products at a great price point, so make sure you check them out. All right, wrapping things up here on a Wednesday special West Coast edition talking Western Bass Shootout. April 14th through 16th on the California Delta. 
Sacramento, California, uh, westernbassshootout.com, combining the best from the uh, Apex Series, the Wild West Team Trail, the One Bass, and the uh, Toyota Series Western Division. So that'll be fun to watch. Big shout out to uh, Billy Egan, Jeremy DeHart, and Rick Pierce from Bass Cap Boats for jumping on. And then also Alex Klein, Bill Brown, and Nick Salvucci, anglers competing in it. Uh, tomorrow, no day four with Frank Scalish. Frank, a little bit under the weather. So we're going to let Frank uh, heal up. I talked to him. I mean, he's fine. He's doing good. He just... He, they said he sounds like he's just ate an entire pack of Marlboro Reds. So we're going to give Frank a day to uh, a day to recover. And then the next week I am at Toledo Bend competing in the second Bassmaster Open of the year. Got some really cool stuff for that. That is going to be a full on film event uh, recording a lot. And I've already recorded some stuff for that event that uh, I, I can honestly say I don't think has ever been done before as far as an approach to a Bassmaster Open tournament as far as how I'm getting ready and planning and putting my game plan uh, into action for that. Not going to say anything about that till after that event, but there will be uh, live shows from Toledo Bend from the Gleason residence, Daryl Gleason, who lives on Toledo Bend and has good uh, and has good uh, internet service. So uh, I'll have a schedule out on the uh Bass Talk Live or BassOne.com as far as what that's going to look like. But as far as that's concerned, uh, I think that's all we got for today's show. Like I said, uh, no show tomorrow. No day four with Frank Scalish because Frank's a little bit under the weather. I'm actually going to go do some filming. I'm going to go try to catch some white bass and some hybrid stripers on film. So, uh, also, want to remind everybody, don't forget, uh, St. Jude's fundraiser still going on through the 14th. You can go to BassZone.com, click on the Shop BTL tab, uh, and for $24.95, support St. Jude's uh, for that Dick Hiley St. Jude Bass Classic. It is a BTL and St. Jude collab for the t-shirt, Bass Fishing Saves Lives. Uh, greatly support those who uh, have already purchased it, and if you, uh, if you are so inclined, Greatly appreciate those who will. All right, that's all we got for Wednesday. Thanks to the all-star cast of guests today. We will talk to everybody later. See ya.